Hey, I'm back with Sean Palmer. This time it's episode 5, level 5, Snowbird. It's been another two levels, so it's time to show off the last outfit, and of course, another board. Well, my thoughts on Snowbird is that it's one of the weaker levels. I'm also biased by the unneeded difficulty of some of the goals. If you're just trying to get to the last level and you only need 46 sponsors overall from the preceding seven levels, you can just get the score goals here, maybe the logos and the secret sponsor, and you can ignore the more frustrating parts of the level. But anyway, the three unique goals here are to abolish the snowmen, ride the trams, and stop the runaway snowmobile. One of them is just another collection hunt. The other two require some finesse and interacting with the level. The hallway of rocks at the beginning is a little weird because the rocks will just toss you around. They won't make you fall down, but they won't give you much opportunities to string anything together. You might get one or two jumps out of that, but that's it. Anyway, we're heading up here because the first logo is up here, and you can certainly ride these ski lift lines all the way down to the rest of the level for a nice 5,000 point gap. However, we won't be doing that because I still want to show off parts of the level. This is the score run. Snowbird's divided up into three sections. The first is sunny and sort of natural. The second is foggy and even more low-key, kind of reminding me of Kirkwood. And the last section, much like Kirkwood, opens up into a more skate park-like area. Of course, you know what I'm looking forward to here, but that jump is one of the biggest in the game, and it's fun to drop through the fog to the next area. The second area has a half-pipe or two, so it's not too bad. Still, the whole level feels like a mishmash of sections rather than one coherent level. The second part of the level will be used more for the unique objectives run, but for the score goal, you just want to get down to the bottom. It certainly feels free enough to work in, and there's a good half pipe on the left side. I'm taking the right side though to set myself up for a certain reset point, nothing more than that. Sort of a minor nitpick, but I wish the game would tell you which rails you can go through and which rails you can't, because there's pretty much nothing telling them apart. Just past that building is the end of the level. However, this is also the Logos and Secret Sponsor run, and we've been missing them along the way. It's a little awkward to get a lot of points while going for the third and fourth Logos, so the first run down I really just wanted to get the majority of the points out of the way. And I only wanted to reset once at most, didn't want to drag this run out too long. There's one of the trams we have to ride later, simply setting foot in it didn't do anything, and you have one guess as to what we're going to do with it later. Or rather two, since we're either grinding or bonking part of it. If you're not here for the third logo, the left side of the second area is pretty desolate. Again, if they'd added more challenges, even easy ones, and put one over there, it'd give more reason to go over there. Up here is an area we can only get to by following the left-hand side of the previous section. Grinding up this tree and dropping onto this wire gets us on top of the house where the third logo is. See, if the logo wasn't up there, there'd be no reason to go up there. Jumping over the half pipe to the right side lets us take the ski lift reset point. It is a bit odd to have two reset points so close together, but this one's shorter and drops us off at the start of the third area. I'm not sure where the wire comes from that leads to the secret sponsor, so I get it by doing a big ollie off the yellow and black snow pump. Caution, ramp. Anyway, the fourth logo is on top of the ski lift. We get there by grinding a combo of rails, but then we need a couple extra points to achieve the six scores, so I get that right before the end. When I say the level ends right after that building, I don't mean right after that, but. With 37 sponsors, we get the 7th level. With 38, we get 2 more stat points. I think the game expected you to gradually make yourself better in everything. Because if you make yourself too good in something too early, some of the early challenges actually become tougher. 
this run takes on the three unique challenges. If you're playing along and just want to get to the last level, I'd say, again, don't do these for your sake, but if you want to do them to 100% a character, well, follow along. Actually, abolishing the snowmen isn't that bad. You're just smashing them. And the other two won't take you all day, but they're just a bit too based on luck. I made a goal of doing Ride the Trams the first time down without resetting, and this caused me to have to restart the level, like, five or six times. But anyway, what we have to do with the trams is grind the middle rail, ding ding ding. There's only two of them, and you know where to find them, since they have to be on the tram line. But the second one here, oh, this is the real troublemaker. The jump you go off doesn't consistently put you on the tram, and that's what makes it tougher. Here's the snowmobile, and it already looks pretty much stopped. Bonking it once makes it start up again, and we have to follow it and bonk it four more times before the finish line for it to stop. Apparently starting something is easier than stopping it in this game. In real life, it's the other way around. This challenge is still tough, because while the snowmobile does follow the same path every time, and while you are faster than it so you can catch back up, there's still a bit of luck involved, and I never quite feel like I have the handle on it. The game's auto-lock will help you out, but I find when I do the goal, I stop it either really quickly or right before the finish line. Either the bad keeps piling up, or it goes smoothly. What doesn't go smoothly here is, well, this. I didn't mean to bonk, I swear. I just wanted to hit the other rail. But there's another reset point here right before the end that takes us back to the top, and we needed to go through again anyways. So if those two challenges didn't seem so bad, then of course go for them. Again, maybe I'm clouded by trying to do them both in one run. And with the Ride the Trams goal, if you're just going for that and you miss, it's quicker to restart and go from the top, but that's still 40 seconds or so till you get to the first one. In other games like this, again, Tony Hawk or Dave Mira, you could spend a little bit riding back and setting yourself up again, instead of waiting until the game will send you back. I kind of accentuate the negative in general, so maybe there's not as much of a problem, but you also want to remember these videos don't show off as much of the flaws and times I miss something awkwardly and restart. Well, back to the snowman hunt. In the second part of the level, this time stay to the right, because the fourth snowman is by the red shack. He will probably be your missing snowman that you'll stumble upon accidentally, but when you know where he is, getting him after the third snowman isn't that tough. The fifth snowman, as we've seen, is on a bridge connected to the main ski lodge, with not enough time to go all the way back up and down again. I make sure I get him this time. Moment of truth, guys. Moment of truth. Alright, to be honest, all you need to do is slow down a bit and not get ahead of yourself, and he shouldn't be a problem. Forty-three sponsors, two more stat points. Simply looking at the stats left, after this we'll have four more blocks of two scattered throughout three levels, seemingly. If you just do the math in your head, then uh, the amount of times we get stat points will probably drop off. So make sure you're well-rounded and ready for everything. Of course, this is the speed challenge for Snowbird. In the last video, I said our character had maybe one of the lowest speed stats in the game. I said there might have been other characters as slow as him. There are not any other characters as slow as him, in fact. He does have the lowest speed in the game, so if he can do the speed challenges, any other character can. Of course, it also depends on the player and the route, and Snowbird is pretty much in a straight line as well, so stick to the left in the beginning area to avoid ramps and trees that might slow you down. There aren't many shortcuts. If you wanted to, you could probably ride the tram rail all the way down from the beginning to the end, that's the straightest line you can get, but I don't know if it would get you that many points, and I don't know if you could keep your balance that long. 
if you are on the ground, stay to the left of the second area. The final area sort of curves a little bit to the left and then back to the right. So if you're on the left side, you can stay in a straight line. As you saw, the jump down to the last area is a bit tough. Then again, I might not be saying that if I hadn't crashed then. Picking ourselves up, we get to the end. If you've taken a good route, you have more time left than you think. I was actually worried that I was cutting it pretty close with those falls, but I was still 9 seconds ahead. Continuing the tradition, getting 9 more sponsors than the previous board gets us the next board. However, that's it for Snowbird. Make sure to join me next time on level 6 when we go to Squaw Valley.